Hello folks. In this video I'm going to review the Alpha, which is a brand new 22 watt desktop laser engraver from Algolaser. Algolaser is a new company and I get the privilege of being one of the first to introduce the Alpha to you folks and give them feedback on how it performs. The kit that was shipped to me included an air pump for the air assist feature. In the other box is another user manual for assembling and using the engraver, some zip ties and sample materials, the rear panel of the engraver frame, the front panel, a power adapter, a toolkit with parts and screws for assembling and servicing the engraver, a USB cable to connect the engraver to a PC, safety goggles, and the left frame rail, gantry, and laser module. There's also a steel transfer bar for connecting the Y-axis drive belts together on each side of the engraver. And lastly, we have the right frame rail. Assembling the frame is pretty easy, it's just a matter of inserting the side rails into the front and back panels and securing the corners with a few screws. The laser module has a few nice features like the air, lens, and fire warning lights at the top, and the detachable laser shield that's held firmly in place by strong neodymium magnets in each corner, but allows quick and easy access to the laser head for cleaning and changing the lens. Unlike most 20 watt machines, this module uses a technology that compresses the laser spot from a rectangle to a near perfect square that's as small as 5 hundredths of a millimeter wide. Like most, this module is cooled by a couple of fins mounted on the sides, but another nice feature that this one has is a built in spring loaded focus stick. Just pull down on the lever to lock it and set the focus, then push the button on the side to release it and the spring pulls it back out of the way. The module is connected to the gantry by a cam lever that opens and closes the dovetail groove that the module slides into. After the module was installed, I connected the tubing for the air pump and secured it with the wiring harness using the clips that are mounted on the gantry and a few zip ties. The pump itself is a pretty common but reliable pump which also has rubber feet to prevent vibrations from transferring into the workpiece and the engraver. It also has a regulator that can be used to adjust the airflow or turn it off completely. This engraver has both a key switch and an emergency kill switch, and the power switch needs to be held down for at least 3 seconds before it can be turned on. Combined with the warning LEDs, Algo Laser made safety a top priority with this machine. My first test is going to be cutting this piece of 3mm birch plywood using Lightburn's material test tool, which is a great tool for testing different speed, power, and interval settings on different materials and figuring out the best combination for certain engraving and cutting tasks before starting. I like to use air assist for cutting because it does a much better job, so I turn the regulator to max before starting. The air assist can also be toggled on and off for different tasks in Lightburn. In this case, I turned the air assist on in the material test tool for the cutting procedure, but I turned it off for engraving the text. So when the job starts, Lightburn will control the air assist automatically when it switches between engraving and cutting so that I won't need to do it manually with the regulator. After all of the parameters were set for the test grid, I click the preview button to double check and get a rough idea of how long the job will take, and it looks like it'll take around 17 minutes to complete. Once I was satisfied, I clicked the frame button to move the module around the work area so that I could position the workpiece accordingly, and then I set the focal point and click the start button to start the job. This turned out better than I expected. Most of my other 20 watt engravers won't cut 3mm plywood at 500mm per minute. The cuts are all straight and clean with no charring whatsoever. The text also turned out good. No need for increasing the overscan setting, which helps create a more consistent engraving depth at the edges, but it also increases engraving time. Thankfully that doesn't seem to be an issue for this machine.
Next, I tested engraving on birch plywood using the same material test tool on light burn. The maximum rated engraving speed for this machine is 20,000 millimeters per minute, so I set that as the max for the speed in the test grid and it looks like it worked out fine. Algo Laser claims that this machine can cut 12 millimeter plywood and 30 millimeter pine in a single pass, so I'm going to test those next. The only plywood that I have is birch, so if it makes it through that, then it can cut through just about any species of 12 millimeter plywood. And it looks like it worked. The settings that I used here were 100 millimeters per minute and 100% power. Next, I tried cutting a piece of 19 millimeter spruce. I didn't have any pine that was close to 30 millimeters, but spruce is similar. Although it can be a little bit denser and grainier, it should be a good candidate for testing this machine's power. Once again, I'm impressed. The most I've been able to cut in one pass with other 20 watt engravers is only 15 to 16 millimeters. Next, I wanted to see how well it engraves a high resolution image at high speed, so I really pushed the engraver beyond its rated limit to 24,000 millimeters per minute at 100% power to engrave an image of this puppy. From start to finish, it only took around 32 minutes to complete, which is impressive for an image of this size. As with any engraver though, a higher speed comes with a sacrifice in detail. The more time the laser has to work, the more detail it can transfer to the material. Engraving at high speed is great for simple things like engraving a logo or QR code on a product or packaging, but for detailed quality work like high resolution images, lower speeds are best. For comparison, I engraved the same image at 6000 millimeters per minute and 80% power. You can see the result is much darker and it captured a lot more detail, but this took nearly twice as long to do. So there's always a balance between quality and quantity to consider, depending on the job you're doing and what you need to achieve. To demonstrate the effectiveness of the air assist feature, I'm going to engrave the same image twice, side by side, but one will be done with air assist and the other will be done without it.
As you can see, the engraving done with Air Assist on the left of your screen has a lot less surface burning than the engraving on the right that was done without Air Assist. Surface burn happens when the power is high and the resulting heat combined with debris and oils and gases from the saps and glues and coatings actually stain the surrounding surface. It makes the laser lens dirty more often as well. The Air Assist is designed to mitigate these issues by keeping the work area clear of smoke and debris. To further demonstrate this, I'm going to use the material test tool in Lightburn to create two cut test grids, again one using Air Assist and one without using it. As you can see, the effect is even more obvious when cutting. The Air Assist really helps keep the laser curve clear of debris so it can focus all of its applied strength into the workpiece to cut thicker materials at faster speeds than it otherwise could without it. Of course, like other engravers, this machine can also engrave and cut black acrylic up to 10mm thick in one pass. Since I've been acquiring and using a lot of lasers lately, I figured it was time to put some signage up outside of the workshop to warn visitors, so I taped a coated aluminum sheet to a floor tile to secure it and etched a caution sign into it. I set the laser to just discolor the white paint so the result is darker compared to removing it altogether and exposing the aluminum below, but the discoloring will last as long as the paint does, just the same. Next, I etched a high resolution image of a cougar into another piece of coated aluminum, but this time I set the laser to remove the coating completely and expose the aluminum below so that it contrasts with the black paint better. Algo Laser also claims that this machine can cut sheets of stainless steel up to 0.17 millimeters thick, so I had to try that because I've never seen a 20 watt laser do that before. It struggled a little, but sure enough, it can cut stainless steel. Of course this isn't useful for structural purposes, but in my case it's definitely good to know for future battery builds that require custom battery strip configurations. 
Finally, I want to test color engraving on stainless steel. This works without using any marking agents by simply adjusting the power speed and interval settings like you would to get different darkening shades on other materials. To start, I created another test grid using Lightburn's material test tool and a range of settings that I've used for past 20 watt engravers. Once you have some settings to work with, then you can create some pretty neat things like this owl. So that's it for this video folks. Some of you have been asking about the settings and engraving times for some of the stuff that I feature in these review videos, so I made a point to write that information on the test samples that you're seeing now. Overall I'm quite satisfied with this machine. It's definitely one of, if not the best 20 watt engraver that I've used so far. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, then check out the links in the video description and pinned comment below. The first 10 orders get a free light burn license and a 400 by 400 millimeter honeycomb panel valued at a total $140. And the first 300 orders will get a free 400 by 400 millimeter honeycomb panel valued at $80. If you'd like to see more of this machine, then be sure to subscribe because in the next video I'm going to use it to create something interesting for my electric motorcycle. Until then, take care folks.